Hi, I'm Roger Love, celebrity voice coach, top-selling author, and founder of The Voice of Success Live. I'm working to make the world a better place, one speaking voice at a time, starting with yours. Today, I want to defend a speaking habit that seems to be the talk of the town no matter what town you live in. This particular habit has been harshly and in my view, unfairly condemned in the media. It's called upspeak. Out of a presumably good-natured desire by a few individuals to save the world from some potential negative effects of upspeak, the general public has been swamped with articles and news stories portraying upspeak as if it was the worst thing to happen to the English language since texting. But as a voice coach and verbal strategist with a degree in music, I believe this negative portrayal has hastily backlisted upspeak without acknowledging its actual benefits. As a result, speakers are avoiding or denying a speaking advantage that's waiting right on the tip of their tongues. Let me bring you up to speed on the discussion and then uncover the ways in which upspeak can benefit you. First, some background. If you learned English in the USA, you know that we raise our pitch to a higher note at the ends of sentences when we're asking a question. For example, honey, did the kids do their homework? Upspeak, also known as rising inflection or uptalk or a valley girl regionalism or high rising intonation, so many names, is when we use that same question like intonation of raising our pitch at the end of the sentence before a question mark and then apply to it to sentences that do not have question marks and are not asking questions. For example, the weather's really nice, or I love my dog. Now that we understand the terminology, here's a summary of the news coverage. Upspeak has been portrayed in the media as a speaking style used mostly by people under 40 and According to Bloomberg, it's often associated with Disney Channel loving tweens and valley girls and dismissed as a marker of immaturity and airheadedness. Forbes magazine was a bit less harsh, but they still cautioned when they discussed the negative impacts of upspeak on your career and NPR dedicated an entire interview that I listened to all about the negatives of upspeak. If upspeak is really as damaging as those news outlets alleged, then why is it used so frequently? A New York Times article responds that it's trendy, while others like the BBC say it's just a subconscious habit that people can't get rid of. In my assertion, this coverage has overlooked the fact that upspeak doesn't exist in just one variation. In fact, there are two. In one version, the speaker can sound hesitant and uneducated, but in the second version, it enables the speaker to appear engaging, interesting, and confident. This media coverage has unfairly banished both of the versions of Upspeak to the same blacklist. But I don't want you to do the same thing. And as a result, renounce the powerful, useful version of what I'm gonna teach you about the great part of Upspeak. So let me show you the difference between the two types. The first and most infamous version, I refer to as the slide. Slide Upspeak is when you get to the last syllable of a word before a comma or a period, and you attach it to a slide, an upward sliding pitch. Here's what using slide up speak at the 
breakfast table sounds like. I'm running late? I'm not even that hungry? I'll just grab a snack on the way? Slide up speak is the stereotypical speaking style that we associated with the negative and the valley girls thing. Personally, I grew up in the San Fernando Valley where Frank Zappa's daughter, Moon Unit, was the poster child for this type of speaking regionalism, and that's how it got the name Valley Girl. Today, tons of reality TV stars and famous for being famous girls speak that exact way, loading their sentences with slide, and the transfer effect of using slide up speak is that your listeners might judge you as being obsessed with youth or, or reality TV and consumed by some kind of trendiness or feel like you're uncertain about your own intelligence. So if you catch yourself or your loved ones using slide up speak, I'll add my name to the list of experts suggesting that you stop and you get them to stop. Where the media storm and I part ways is in regards to the second version of Upspeak. Instead of slide Upspeak, I suggest you adopt what I call stair-step Upspeak. In stair-step Upspeak style, the last syllable before a comma or a period is still attached to a higher pitch, but it doesn't slide up to that note. Instead, the pitch ascends progressively as if you were walking up a staircase one step at a time. Here's an example of what stair-step up speak would sound like at the same breakfast table. I'm running late. I'm not really that hungry. I'll just grab a snack on the way. What makes stair-step up speak so effective is the way it creates a melody that communicates to the listeners that you still have more to say and that you're enthusiastic, not uncertain. The step-by-step -step increase in pitch is also more pleasing to the ears because the slide thing makes people feel like you're less passionate or less, less interested. Furthermore, this version of Upspeak can be an advantageous tool to communicate energy and confidence throughout your sentences while dissuading people from interrupting you. No respectable music critic would conclude that all songs that end on a higher note are bad. Yet the Unspeak media discussion seems to have done exactly that by effectively listing all Upspeak variations, even though the stair-step one as bad. So I firmly support research revealing how little the words we speak matter at all. Instead, the sounds our voices make in combination with the words, the pitch, pace, tone, melody, and volumes are so much more important. That's why eliminating all melodies that go up at the end is a very unwise recommendation. A more sensible approach is to recognize which melodies are effective and practice them. Slide up speak can make you sound insecure and uncertain. By contract, stair step up speak can fill your sentences with an uplifting melody and make you sound more interesting and creative to your listeners. What I've shown you today will help you in two big ways. First, you can be more educated listener and speaker the next time you encounter an Upspeak article in the news. Second, you can bring stair-step Upspeak back into your sentences and showcase how imaginative and creative and passionate you are to everyone that listens to you. Play around with the two variations of Upspeak slide and stair step. I've given you all of this information today because I want to make a difference. You tell me what the feedback is. Send me comments at, at @rogerlove1.